Hi, I'm Shauna, this is Shauna's World. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I make videos about living intentionally. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Today's video is gonna be my 2023-2024 review. I've done these at the end of every year for the last few years and usually I'm really excited about making them. Um, I have to admit today I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive about making this video. Um, I think because last year I set myself a lot of goals and I really didn't complete any of them. Um, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I think when it came to a time of sitting down and setting goals, I was at home between travels. I had a lot of kind of homely things on my mind. And then I was off away for the next five months and it was really not very practical to be pursuing the things I wanted to pursue and, and achieving everything I wanted to get done. And then I guess while I was away traveling, a lot shifted because I got offered a new job in a new area. And then when I came back, I had a job move, a life move, a like everything changed. And the whole rest of the year really became about settling into my new life. And the things I'd set as goals at the end of 2022 really weren't priorities anymore. And I'm okay with that. I had a fantastic year. And I guess I wanna share a few reflections on the things that went well last year. Um, so some real highlights were spending a couple of months in New Zealand. I traveled around, I saw some beautiful landscapes and best of all, I got to spend three weeks with my best friend in New Plymouth on the North Island. Um, that was really special, did lots of hiking, stayed in a mountain hut. Um, I saw rainforests, mountains, swam in the sea. I kayaked with seals and dolphins. It was a really, really wonderful time. And then I went on to Thailand where I spent five weeks in a boxing camp and that was just the ultimate lifestyle for me, just having all day every day to focus on my health and well-being, training twice a day, um, eating good food and then in between, in between in my downtime I was working on my videos. And then I finished my travels with a couple of weeks in Vietnam and finished off with a yoga retreat. So that was really special. And then I came back to the UK and everything changed. I um, yeah, found some friends, moved into community, moved into a house share in Devon, found, yeah, a really wonderful living situation um, and started my new job, which, yeah, it was a huge deal and a huge change. Um, and then everything went a bit turbulent because I had emergency surgery to remove a dermoid cyst from my ovary and I also lost my ovary. Um, and that was a really challenging experience, but actually, one of the most important experiences of the year because that healing process and getting better and getting stronger again, going from not being able to walk to training really hard and being really consistent with my running with the help of my running coach, that was a wonderful process. And I really feel like I'm being so much more consistent with my training now because it was so hard to not be able to run for a couple of months. This year I also had the opportunity to go to New York City. I spent four days there by myself and then um, and then had a week in New Jersey with family, visiting loved ones, spending time with my 92 year old grandma who's in a care home there. Um, and I do actually have a video coming from New York, but I've had some problems with the footage, so I'm still working on that. I also got back, ran a half marathon, my first race since my surgery, and a stepping stone to bigger, better races to come. I've also had some wonderful friendship connections this year, some deep, deep love. My very dear friend and I are now officially partners, and it's been a good year for nourishing my mind as well. I've started learning German again on a very low level, and I read 171 books or audiobooks this year, which is by far and away my best year for reading or, or listening to audiobooks, so really pleased with that. But anyway, on to my 2024 goals, which is the bit I'm really excited about. I found it quite hard to get the balance right this year because there are a few things that really do feel like priorities and things I do want to focus on. But I do feel like I might have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew and I don't want to kind of just not do any of it again. I really want to prioritise these things. So I made a list of quite a lot of goals, but then there are a couple of really, really key priorities within that and the others are more nice to have. 
Now, amongst my main goals are my running goals, and I have two big ultras this year, which feels very daunting when I've only just got around a half marathon, and I've had a really tough year for running in general because of injury and illness, but we're getting back to it next year. So I have 50 kilometers on the Southwest Coast path on my birthday in April, and that will be my next race. And then I have 50 miles at the end of July in the Lakeland 50, which is mountainous. It's gonna be really tough, but I know it's quite an inclusive race, so hopefully I can do it. Running is a huge priority for me in 2024, and I think that's because it's been such a savior for me in 2023. My running club, Queer Runnings, has become such a special, safe and sacred space for me, and long may that continue. For YouTube, I've been saying for years, my goal is to get monetized. Hopefully this will be the year that I do it, but I also don't think that's a very tangible goal I can set because really it's out of my control who subscribes to me, but the tangible goal I'm setting myself is to upload once a week on a Sunday and try and keep that consistent throughout the year because that is in my control and I really do want to prioritize sticking to that. Another big goal for me in 2024, which is it's quite a hard one to set because it's it's really habits rather than goals, which when you're talking about habits, it's it's a lot harder to measure success of it because I'm just trying to do my best as much of the time as possible. But I've noticed when I do kind of consistent habits, things like breathwork, meditation and journaling, doing my daily German on Duolingo, Practicing good habits, like with dental hygiene and skincare, like this year I really want to learn more about skincare and, and prioritise that on a regular basis. These kind of little daily habits are things that I find really, really hard to stay consistent with. But I feel like when I do, I feel so much better in myself. So I want to prioritise sticking with my habits, developing routines and not pressuring myself that I have to do this every day or I've failed because that's just going to set me up for failure but just constantly coming back to the things that nourish me as a north star to look at and try to use as a guideline for what will make me feel well and perform at my best in every aspect of my life. Another really big goal for 2024 is to sell my flat um, I won't go into it too much because it's quite boring, but I have a flat in London. I'm very lucky to have it. Um, I rent it out, but the tenants do not pay rent. It has been such a headache. My mortgage has doubled. I've really, really struggled to cope with it. And um, I just am really trying to sort it all out and get it sorted and then sell the flat so I can move forward with future plans and dreams in Devon and maybe buying some land and living the land-based dream. Like if I can get that off my plate, I will be so, so happy. Um, also acknowledging I am in a very fortunate position to own property in London. In 2024, I would also like to complete my meditation teacher training. I'm doing an online course at the moment. I love meditating. I know I'm not the deepest and wisest mes meditator, and I absolutely don't want to make money from being a meditation teacher. And it's not something you even legally need a qualification for. It's more just that I run a lot of breath works at festivals and things like that. And sometimes I think it'd be really nice while I'm there to offer a meditation circle as well or in communal spaces and just to be able to hold that space in as good a way as possible. So I'm doing this course so I feel confident to do that and I'm really, really enjoying the course and going deeper into my practice, but I'd like to finish that this year. And then another thing for 2024 is I have recently launched a breath work circle that's local to me in Totnes and I loved my first one it was a really really beautiful experience but I want to keep growing and building that over the coming months I'm doing it on a monthly basis and I'd like to just keep going with that and build up more of a community with it I've also just launched a LGBTQIA plus online breathwork circle and um, it's also going to be on a monthly basis on a Friday and um, if you are interested in that just I'll actually link to my meetup group in the description because then you can see if there are any events you want to attend um but that's going to be a really nice wholesome held queer space um on a monthly basis and with those two it's just I want to 
keep holding those and keep building my community with it and make sure that becomes an established part of my facilitation. And then I guess a few other intentions for the next year, which aren't quite as strongly important to me, but I'd like to keep on my radar, are working on my plant ID knowledge and going on re regular foraging walks and, and trying to, yeah, get back to where I was a couple of years ago with my learning of plant knowledge and, and fungus knowledge. I want to aim to read or listen to over a hundred books or audio books over the coming year. I want to improve my Final Cut Pro skills so that I can start putting out better quality videos. Um, I enjoy the videos I put out, but I know they're not objectively great videos. I don't know how to do lots of cool snazzy editing stuff. I struggle a bit even with the basic stuff. So I really want to upskill in that area and I have downloaded a course um, so I want to do some of that. I'd also really like to take on at least one breathwork apprentice this year. Um, I did it a couple of years ago and it was guiding someone through the facilitator training with me. The syllabus is created by a school, but I'm kind of their mentor throughout it and support and answer questions and kind of walk the path with them. And um, I really got a lot out of doing that. And it's not, I'm not going to push something that's not there because I think like it has to be a really good fit. And I feel like I don't want to over market it because I want it has to feel in alignment for the person who chooses to work with me and for me working with them. But I want to put it out to the universe that I'd really love the opportunity to do that again because it helped me grow as a facilitator and teacher as well. And obviously it's great to see someone going on their journey to facilitation. And my final intention for 2024 is to let go of my caffeine dependency. Um, I would like to give up caffeine for at least a good chunk at the start of the year and then only have it sporadically after that. I used to be a total caffeine fiend and then when I was going through inpatient trauma treatment I gave up caffeine altogether as part of my kind of trying to regulate more in my nervous system and that felt really good. I felt better in myself. I was able to get up earlier in the mornings and, and feel well rested um, and I did after a while of being completely caffeine free, I started to introduce occasional coffees. But when I went traveling in the in the last year or so, I couldn't get decaf coffee everywhere. And coffee is kind of <laughs> a bit of an addiction, even if not for the caffeine, it's a real comfort to me. So I started drinking caffeine again, and now I'm very, very much dependent on it. So I'm gonna give it up at the start of January and then maybe slowly introduce little bits to help with my running in the future but I don't want it to be a daily thing anymore. So those are all my goals and intentions for the next year. And I would just say, finally, usually I choose a word for the year. And two years ago, my word was growth and it was such a big year of growth. Last year it was alignment and it helped me move into a life that felt a lot more aligned for me. And I've really struggled to land on what it is this year. I've been going through lots of options and nothing has completely resonated as strongly as those two did over the last two years. But I think I've landed on commitment and I feel like that could sound like quite a hustly word and like I'm trying to hustle and I'm not, but actually I feel like a lot of it's about commitment to myself and commitment to the life I want. Commitment to taking care of what I need so I can be a better person for the people around me, but also a commitment to not always doing the most comfortable thing, kind of putting the bigger picture ahead of my immediate comfort because I really crave comfort and that's something I, I mean, comfort is good, it has a place, but I think I, I seek comfort too much, um, particularly in things like scrolling on my phone and commitment feels like something that encapsulates both nourishing myself being there for the people I love and care about, being able to contribute to something bigger than me, bigger picture and commitment to the mission and where I want to be. So yeah, it feels it feels all encompassing and something that does feel like a good anchor for me. So there you have it. That's my 2324 review. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments if you have any goals for 2024 or anything you want to focus on for the upcoming year. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more intentional living stuff, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I love having you here. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.